Welcome to another video. As always, my name's Jasper, and what we're going to be covering today is Google's new Gemini AI, which was announced by them just a couple of days ago and actually implemented within their BARD system. So just for those who don't know, uh, so Gemini allows you to interact with text, images, video, audio, and code. So it's been able to do this all in one system, so competing with OpenAI. And then along with that, um, although it's not released for the API just yet, they have implemented it within BARD. So let's take a look. To get to BARD, all you need to do is just Google search BARD uh, Google, and you'll find this link. You will need a Google account to access it. So all you've got to do there is uh, once you've jumped in, you will see a UI just like this with some, um, I guess, some advice on prompts you can use and stuff you can do. Uh, then up the side here, you will have the BARD activity. So just the activity of what you've been doing, extensions, help, uh, settings, and then your ordinary Google settings. Now, if you come into extensions, you'll see that they've already got connections with Google Flights, Google Hotels, Google Maps, Google Workspace, and YouTube. Because I think we need to remember that Google has control over all of this. So they um, got access to the Google Workspaces, YouTube, any Google products. So they were probably going to be able to integrate BARD very easily within those uh, ecosystems, which is uh, great for users. Um, probably not that great for OpenAI. So now let's take a look. So with the YouTube one, it means that you're not just looking at the text. It can also look at the video and the audio as well as the images. Because let's not forget that this thing um, can do more than just text, as we saw before here on the Gemini area. So let's jump back into the actual UI. So the first thing you're going to want to do is check that you have Gemini. So if you go, what model is <coughs> Bard using? takes a little bit of time, there we go. So it's saying that it's using the new model, um, and it explains a little bit about it and what it can do and how it's more accurate, so great. So that's just to double check that you are actually got, that you do actually have access to the Gemini model. So now that we've done that, we can get rid of it, and let's try something else. So we have here help solve a problem, and obviously it's got this little icon here, so that means it must use YouTube. So let's just click that for a minute, and as you can see, it goes find videos of how to, and then it's got its keyword here. So let's change it to something that I might do, or somebody that you know creates videos. So we'll go, please do some research on this topic. And then let's change this blue stuff here to no code development. This is something I do for a service. So we'll go, please do some research on this topic, no code development. Um, let's see. Get rid of that blue text, paste it here. Okay, um, so do some research on no code development. Uh, please come back with the best uh, YouTube titles that would go viral for this industry. A little bit uh, messy, but let's see how it comes back. Alright, so it's gone off and it's got some stuff. I don't think that's exactly what we wanted, but I did mess the prompt up a bit. So it looks like it's gone and checked some specific books, um, intriguing titles, all around no code. So let's try that again, because that was my fault. So let's go instead go, let's double check where we actually got the extension on. <laughs> Pray good start. Yep, okay. So we've got Google, uh, YouTube there. Goes, please search on you sorry please search on youtube the topic no code development review the top youtube videos and then provide me three engaging uh, youtube titles based off your research Okay, so let's see how that goes. Okay, so it's gone off, it's done some research. So it's got uh, no code revolution, build apps without coding, um, got from idea to app in hours, the ultimate no code tutorial, 
uh, the no-code secret, three tools you need to know. So I think my examples weren't that great, so let's try something just built in. Help solve a problem. Let's use their example. Oop. Did I do that right? Probably not. There we go. There we go. Now it's doing it properly. So I was obviously doing something wrong, but um, as you can see, let's say it was searching YouTube there. So now it's actually found the videos as well as listing out lots of videos. So it lists out each one of them. So let's see what it did. It would ask, find videos of how to quickly get grape juice out of um, a wet rug. It goes, uh, here are some videos on that. Uh, then it finds the videos. And it goes, in addition to watching these videos, you can also try the following. So it gives you some tips, which is awesome. It goes, if the stain is visible after you've tried these tips, you may need to take your rug uh, to a professional cleaner. And then it'll also list the videos down here. So that's pretty cool. So let's see what else we can do. Uh, create, so supportive response, write some JavaScript. Let's do that. So write a JavaScript function that takes a path uh, in an input file, data text, or in the outer system. Yeah, let's see how it does. So we're asking it to create a, a JavaScript function, oh, sorry, Java function. Let's see how it does. And there we go. So it did that quite quickly, but I will say that it was this built-in function, so they probably, uh, you know, actually set it up to be quite a fast response. So instead, let's do that again. Uh, let's give it something else. Right, so we're going to say that nope, takes a file and extracts the file's extension code. Then imports into a CSV file with the name of the file included. Let's see how it does that way. Okay. There we go. Okay. Well, once again, that did pretty well, and it's actually pumping out some pretty nice code um, as I do with uh, ChatGPT quite a bit, and the code can sometimes not be the greatest, definitely recently. But um, at the same time, you know, we'd have to really do a test by test comparison. But um, so as you can see, Bard has gotten a hell of a lot better. So you can use it now for code. You can use it for doing accurate research on YouTube and Google and the internet. Um, you can also connect it with other uh, aspects of your technology, so flights, hotels, maps, workspaces, YouTube, and I'm sure this list will grow as time goes on. Um, and yeah, so I guess exciting times for Bard, exciting times with the AI industry, and seeing this really go further. Thanks for taking the time for watching the video today. Hope you learned a little bit about it, and maybe comment how your um, experiments go using Bard.